Hi, I'm Reva with Quality Sewing and Vacuum, and thank you for joining us for another wonderful day and a good morning to you. Um, today in our How Do I series, we're going to look at something that's really fun. We're going to see how a computer software program can help you plan and execute your next quilting project really simply. So maybe you want to plan a quilt a certain size. Well, there's blocks built into the software so you can switch them out and see how they look. You can even audition different fabrics, even fabric that you own. You can see what it looks like on your quilt. You can design your own blocks. You can create paper piecing uh, patterns just as quick as you please. There's even lots of designs already built in. You're gonna love it. You can do applique. It's gonna give you rotary cutting instructions. It's going to even communicate well, not communicate, but create files that you can work with with your scanning cut. And today we have a really great guy gonna show you how it works. We have Jim from our um, Everett store who's gonna walk you through and show you how wonderful the software is and how easy it is to use. Now, before I turn you over to Jim, just want you to know that we do have a special price on this software right now. So come into our stores or visit us on our website at qualitysewing.com and you'll be able to get that special price. So now let's go take a look and see what Jim has to uh, share with us. So Jim, you wanna take it away? Hi. This is Jim from Quality Sewing and Vacuum, and I wanted to take a few moments to show you my new favorite software, Design and Quilt by Alex Anderson and r &K. It's an amazing software program that allows you to do a lot with quilting. In the past, we've always needed software for piecing and designing our quilt and picking out our fabrics. And then if we wanted to add an embroidery, we had another software program for adding embroidery. And if we wanted to do applique and have things cut out, well, we had another software program for that. And finally, if we actually took it to a quilter who did the computerized quilting, we needed another software program to design that. The unique thing of this software is it does all of that with one piece of software. So I really enjoy it. Uh, I've used lots of quilting software and I have to say, this is my favorite. So I'm going to take you through a few things. We're going to make a couple blocks. There's a couple of different tools for that. Uh, we'll lay out a quilt. I'll show you some printing instructions, very unique ways that it does printing. And then I'll take you through a little bit of what it can do with embroidery, maybe cutting out your appliques and finish off with a uh, design your own quilt label. So let's get started. I'm going to create a new design. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make some blocks. Now, before we get too crazy making blocks, I just wanted to show you that it does have a quilt block library built into it, where you can just click on it and there's a whole bunch of pre-made blocks. So if it's a standard diamond and square or a nine patch or something that's not too unique, chances are it may be here and you don't have to waste a lot of time designing. You can just go in here, pick out a block and you can recolor it, you can, resize it, you can print out the cutting instructions, you can put it into a quilt without doing anything other than just selecting a block. So I'm going to show you though how to draw a block from scratch. And it's here in our easy block tool. There's two different tools for designing a block. There's the create easy block, which handles all your basic stuff, squares, rectangles, any triangle with a 45 or 90 degree angle. Uh, if it gets more complicated than that, you really need to use the advanced block. So at first you're going to get this block set up. It's gonna be generically where you left it last time. And you have a couple of choices over here and to make it just look a little easier, I'm going to change it to four across, and four down, and we'll make two inch blocks so that you can see it's a standard, you know, 16 patch block here. Now I can keep them squares like this, or if I wanted to divide things up, I can go and um, use quarter square triangles. <clears throat> this gives me my most options. If I have a block that just has angles going in one direction or another, it does have those options here with the half square triangles up or down. I'll just show you that really quick. I like the quarter square triangle because if I'm doing something unique or drawing on my own, I have the option to switch the angle on the fly and I'll show you that here. So I'm gonna pick the quarter square triangle and I'm gonna reapply it. And now to draw out my block, all I have to do are select areas by holding down my control key. 
and welding them together. So I can create whatever shape block I want. I have very few restrictions here other than once again, we're in simple block, so or easy block, and I can only select blocks that have a 45 or a 90 degree angle. I can't magically make these blocks uh, do 60 degree angles or anything like that. So I'm just gonna take my time here, get a couple of cool blocks here. As you can see, I'm gonna make this into a square. Just to finish that off, I'll do the same thing over here. Finish that off. Same thing here. Finish that off. Now, if you see a pattern somewhere and you're, you're trying to replicate it, this can be pretty easy. If you're drawing from scratch, you may play around with it for a while um, until you get really comfortable kind of designing your own blocks. I'm gonna keep the pieces a little bigger this time only because I don't wanna take forever coloring it in. And I am really just making this up as we go along. So just take a, a few seconds here, get these last triangles filled in. So I've got my basic block layout. It may or not may not be a cool block, um, but we'll see here in a second. I'm going to join these two pieces just to kind of give it a different shape, just to show you we can. It'll change the cutting instructions a little bit too. Uh, I'm going to make these two the same. And if I make a mistake and I don't like what I did, like maybe I don't like this part right here. It's kind of clunky looking. Maybe I want to join those two. Maybe I want to do something totally different here in the corner. You can un unjoin the stuff or what they call unweld it. So you can redo that whole area. And then reweld those blocks. Now, once I get all my blocks drawn and basically the shapes I want, I get to do the fun part of coloring it in. So I have Floriani threads on here because that's the thread I use for my embroidery projects. You can have a wide variety of different libraries. I'm gonna stop here on these purples. So we'll put a purple there. I'll come over here and I can scroll down. I also have this nice option here where I can pop them up and see all the colors I want. So I'll put a different purple in there. And then let's just grab one more color for, for accents. And I'm just gonna grab one of these pinks so I have three colors I can play around. And now once I have all my colors, it's really easy for me just to, to go in, draw my blocks. I'm just coloring now, <clears throat> making whatever shapes I like. If I'm following a pattern. This is once again, really easy. If I'm not, it can become a little more challenging. I get my block. Mm, I think I need some more color in here. So I'm gonna add just a different color there. Once it's done, I can save that block. I can use it in a quilt. Um, I was just kind of messing around with this one. I'm probably not gonna save it, but just to show you where it would go in your quilt block library, you do have your My Blocks. So these are some of the ones that I've drawn in the past. This pinwheel one's really nice. So I could use that in any quilt, um, And it's all using those 45 and 90 degree angles. So the My Block tool for making easy blocks very, very simple. And then once you have it, you save it in my blocks and, and you can use it in any of your quilt layouts. The other tool that's there is our create advanced blocks. This is gonna start you with a blank square. Uh, you do have grid set up and I've set my grid up to be one inch squares basically. So now I can just draw using my draw tool up here because all of these tools right here are the ones for basically making blocks and designing quilts. So I'm gonna pick my draw tool and I'm gonna do this block here is not limited by angles. So if I wanted to do some paper piecing, I'm gonna do a little stripe quilt block here really quick. I'll just keep it nice and simple like that. Um, I now just go to piece select and if I've drawn all my lines and made connected shapes, it's just going to automatically do that. 
I'm going to select a piece, put in a color. I'm going to select another piece and I'll put some yellow in there. I'm going to pick my next piece, put a little purple in there, and maybe a little green. And then I'll finish it off with the same red that I used up here. So I have a nice cool little block. Once again, I can go up here to file. I'm going to save that one to my library. I like that block. It's kind of unique. I'll just call it design number three. And there it is. So I have a block done. I can use it in my quilts. And I'll show you that here in a second. We'll actually use this one when we design a little quilt. So I did want to show you some cutting instructions because it's kind of unique. This pinwheel one here is all rotary cut. It's all squares and regular 45, 90 degree angles. So when I print the instructions for that one, I'm not going to do foundation piecing. I'm just going to print regular cutting instructions. I'm going to keep it at a quarter of an inch. I'm going to hit OK. And it's going, to, it's going to give me this nice preview where it shows the block. And then it shows me all the pieces I need, how much fabric I need. But more importantly, right here, it shows my cutting instructions. And the cutting instructions are very, very nice. They start with you know the width of fabric that you normally buy, which you can tell it when you go to the print option. And then it tells you how many strips to cut of what size and then how to cut them down. So you don't waste any fabric. It doesn't just tell you to cut 30 pieces of um, you know, three and three eighths by uh, four inches. It tells you cut a strip and then cut that strip down into rectangles. So it's nice, it's easy. Uh, I really like that it goes through. If there's multiple pieces from the same color, it doesn't have you cut multiple strips. If it can all be cut from the first strip, it tells you to cut the first strip and then use the remainder of that for the rest. So you're not cutting into fabric, you don't need to needlessly. So that one there is really easy, nice rotary cutting instructions. This one here, we're probably not gonna rotary cut. We're probably gonna foundation piece this one. Now this is a nice and simple, easy foundation piecing. It's basically just stripes. So I can just auto assign it and let it go. Uh, and it would probably do it correctly, but if I wanted to be a little more in charge, let's say, I'm going to manually assign it now and say, I want to cut this one first, which is what I would start with. And then I would add that to it and then that to it and then that to it. And I would finish with this one. So now I can hit close. And when I go to print my instructions for this one, once again, keep my quarter inch and my fabric summaries, my piece analysis. Um, I'm going to turn off my cutting instructions now and go to foundation piecing. So it's going to print me a whole block. It's going to print all my separate sections. It's going to print my piece templates. It's going to show me everything I need. When I tell you about fabric width, if you're buying 60 inch width fabric, or maybe you have some backing fabric you bought that's 105 inches, put that in here because it's going to change the cutting instructions and your rotary cutting instructions for that width of fabric. So you're not cutting as many strips. So in head OK, there it is, my foundation piecing, one, two, three, four, five. The next page is going to show me the different pieces. Once again, I'm not going to cut any of these pieces out. It's just kind of a guideline, um, how much fabric I need. This next one is going to give me a template for the block. And then this one is the one that I would print out uh, that's all separated for sections. Now, this block is, is fairly wide. So I would probably, if I was paper piecing this particular pattern, do it in blocks small enough that would fit on a piece of paper. But for right now, it's going to show you, you would tape these two pieces together, use the nice print and piece fabric is really nice. Uh, it allows you to print on it uh, and it's a little water soluble. So after you tear the little bits and pieces away, you don't have to pick out every piece. I kind of like it. It's an Alex Anderson Quilter Select product as well. I use it all the time for paper piecing. It's really nice. <clears throat> So now it's just going to give me pieces if I want to make templates of all that stuff. So really fun, really easy. Um, I can edit those different lines if I want to, if I didn't draw something correctly. It pretty much walks you through all of that stuff. So we've created some blocks now. So let's go to the next part, which is designing some quilts.
once again, they do have a really nice layout of quilts that Alex Anderson herself has designed. So we can see um, if you just wanted to pull one of those in and make it, it's all right there. It tells us down here how big the quilt is. Um, we have all our different sections. If I were to go to my cutting instructions, they would all be there. This one has some applique. So I could print out the applique instructions for these pieces. So very nice, very simple. Lots of fun stuff that she put in there. We also have a place though where we save our quilts. So I've played around a little bit already. So here's one uh, that I designed. Um, it's actually, a, we, I think I saw it on TV. I was like, wow, how could I rearrange that with different colors? So I just drew a simple block and recolored it, arranged it so I could see how much fabric would I need? How big is it going to be? Um, what's it gonna look like with those colors? Right here is where we have our new quilt layout. So we're gonna play with that block that I made earlier. So I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna get rid of the sashing just so you can see the blocks a little easier. And I'm gonna leave just a four by four. You can adjust it here to whatever size you like. Here's your block sizes. Once again, I made the pattern pieces for that particular block eight inches by eight inches so they didn't print out on a piece of paper. Maybe I wanna make sure that my patterns are gonna print out on a piece of paper. So I'm gonna make them five by five. And up here, I will change this to eight by eight and apply that. So now I have more squares, but they're smaller. And you'll see when we go to our printing instructions that we'll be able to get that whole thing on one piece of paper. So to add my blocks, I'm just going to come here, click on that. I can right click and actually select all the blocks at one time or every other or just by row. So however you wanna select it, you can do that. So there they're all pink. And I'm gonna to go to my library. my blocks here. And there's that one design number three that I just saved. So I'm going to click on that. And there it is all in there. It's kind of weird like that. But I do have the option of rotating all the blocks. So I'm going to click off here, I'm going to click and now I'm just going to rotate and select every other block and see what that looks like. And my rotate full tools are right here. <clears throat> so I can rotate those around. Uh, until I see something that I like. And once I see that, once again, I can save it. And I can add borders. The border adding tool is right here. The borders can be mitered or not. When you click on a border, it tells you right here all the different styles of borders you can do. Uh, and then you have your size of the border. So if you want to adjust those sizes, you can do that. And down here at the bottom, once again, you get that status bar that tells you exactly how big the quilt's going to be. And then down here, you have a status bar for the current piece you have selected. So you're kind of knowing um, how big something is. If you're not sure how big something is, you always have the option of using a ruler. The ruler is kind of nice. If I wanted to measure diagonally across one of these blocks, for example, it's 6.91 inches. And I can get that any kind of information I want out of here. So this is all still artwork. There's no stitches in here. So I'm gonna go up now to my printing instructions again. Because remember we made some changes. We went from that big eight inch block down to a five inch block and now I have a whole quilt. So I'm gonna get rid of cutting instructions and I don't really need actual size pieces. <clears throat> I really just wanna know the full quilt, the quilt information and how much fabric I need for this particular quilt. Because these are paper piece blocks, I'm not gonna print them all out at one time. I'm gonna look into my settings here and see, there's my total size, how many pieces I'm going to need. And then here's my fabric yardage requirement. So to make that quilt with no borders or anything, cause I didn't add any borders to it. Uh, you can see the fabric requirements of each color if I'm gonna use those colors. So I'm gonna close that. And now, but now I'm gonna make this a five inch block like the ones I'm using in the quilts. And when I go to print my instructions, quarter inch seam, foundation piecing, I'm going to hit OK. Now you're going to be able to see it's going to all fit <clears throat> on one page. So I could print those out, print the number of blocks I need, and have those available to do my paper piecing with.
So lots of fun. You can design any quilt you want. You can put the, the fabric on points or uh, straighten in rows. Totally your option. And then once you're done, you can save all that stuff. So some other cool things we can do are applique. I really like the applique features in this because this is based on um, other Floriani software products. Uh, it has a really, really nice applique program built into it. And it's pretty easy to use too. So I'm gonna click on a new design here and just say, I wanna put, um, there, there's some pre-built art here or you can draw your own art, uh, trace around something you have. But I'm going to come up here and just grab an animal and um, everyone that knows me knows I like cats. So I'm gonna grab this little kitty here and I have it set up. I can measure across or I can just look at my grid. Once a day and I told you I had to set up for one inch grids. So if I want the kitty to fit into my five inch block, I can make it just a little bit bigger. One, two, three, four, five. It's gonna fit perfectly inside there. And to turn this into an applique, I, I don't think they could have made it any simpler. I'm gonna hit this button down here, it says applique. These are all of my different embroidery options. And when you get into the software, you'll see all the cool things it can do. There's a lot of embroidery built into the software that's usually not included with quilting software. So I'm gonna create an embroidery. It's done my satin stitch. I could change it to a blanket stitch if I prefer and do more of that traditional hand look applique or I could do decorative stitches, tons and tons of decorative stitches. If you wanted to see what it looked like with little decorative stitches around it. So the nice thing is once you're done, uh, you can pick a color if you want to, but it's a one color design. It's just gonna go around in an outline. So um, you just leave it whatever color it came out with. And you'll see down here, it actually breaks it down into three for your sewing machine. So it's going to tell it to do a tack down stitch. It's going to tell it to, um, you know, where to place the fabric, then a tack down stitch. And then it's going to do the applique around the edge after you cut the fabric. Well, if you don't want to cut the fabric, it also includes this piece of artwork. So artwork is what the cutting machines use. So I've got this perfectly sized and I can save this in two different ways and take it to two different machines. So I'm going to go to save here. I'm going to save as, and you're going to see all the, whoops, wrong place. I'm going to name this kitty. And you're going to see all the different embroidery formats we have. If you have a brother machine, if you have a Faf, Viking, Janome, Bernina, they're all in here. So I'm just going to pick brother and save it. Now I have an embroidery file. I can just take straight over to my brother embroidery machine, and it's going to understand and be able to place these kitty appliques on my quilt top. But I can also go in here and hit file save as. And this time I'm gonna name it kitty as well. It won't matter that I already have something named kitty because I'm gonna change this to a different type of format. I'm gonna use SVG files. So the SVG file is really nice because it is for all the different cutting machines. It, it's a vector graphic image file. Um, and so you can see I've done it some, for some other things. It cuts out perfectly and it's gonna cut out a shape, this exact kitty size shape. So I can pre-cut all my fabric pieces out. Once it does the outline stitch on my quilt top, I can temporarily stick that with some spray adhesive or some quilter select glue works really nice uh, and stick it on top of the embroidery pattern and then let it finish its tack down stitch and do its edging around. And then I can move on to the next bunny after I re or the next uh, cat after I rehoop. So really nice. We've done some applique. We've done our quilting. We put our pieces together. We can now take and take this, this software and use it to design our quilting stitches. So I'm going to do a different cat, but I'm going to go in here and go to a new design. <clears throat> I'm going to grab some artwork. And I'm just going to get a different kitty. So let's say I'm going to use this one here. And I'm going to use my create an outline. And I don't need to ripple any. I'm just going to create an outline. Got my kitty outline there. And I'm going to use that as a quilting pattern. I'm just going to place it around on my quilt. So I'm going to come over here in my select tool. I'm going to select that line. 
and I'm going to create a run stitch and it's done. There's my run. It's one piece of artwork. And now I can come over here to file and save as. And just like before, but now I'm going to say, I want to stitch this with my Handy Quilter Pro Stitcher. So I save it as a Handy Quilter Pro Stitcher file. Now I can take it over to a robotic quilting machine and it's going to stitch that outline of a kitty and I can place it multiple places because the quilting machine will allow you to do repeats and resize it and put it exactly where you want it. It takes care of all that. It just needs the file for the path for it to follow around and create the kitty pattern. So as you can see, I've done everything from, from picking out fabrics and cutting fabrics and getting all those instructions, putting my pieces together, putting my quilt top together, add some applique, do my quilting stitches. All that's left to do is a label. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna create a label. So it's got a lot of stuff over here in the corner. These are just my embroidery stuff. There are some built-in embroidery designs if you wanna stitch something specific. We're just gonna do a simple quilt label because I always like to put a label on the back of my quilts. <clears throat> you see there's lots of frames. So I'm just gonna pick a frame, make it a little wider. And then I'm going to come over here and grab some text. You can recolor that frame however you like. With Floriani text, you just click in the box. It's gonna put a box that says text in there. And now you can go through and pick out the actual font you want. I'm just going to use a nice primer font. Put my quilted by Jim in today's date. Month and year. I'm going to hit apply. It's going to pop it in. I can see now my font is bigger. So if I zoom out a little bit, I'm going to put my font there. I'm going to click on my frame. Whoops, I, I forgot to turn off my text tool. Good thing we have an undo button here. I'm going to click on my select. I'm going to grab my frame. I'm going to make it a little bigger so it fits around my text. Let it calculate. Once again, these are embroideries. So they're going to calculate a little bigger. Pop it on there. And then same deal. I can just go in, select my machine type, save this as an embroidery pattern and just stitch it right out on my embroidery machine. So lots of fun things. I can go on and on about this. It's by far my favorite quilting software. It allows me to do everything from grabbing my pieces and my fabric to finishing the quilt with my quilting designs. I get to use a variety of machines without having to buy different software. Uh, I hope you like it. Uh, please stop by your nearest quality sewing and vacuum and take a look at it next time you can.